Takže dobrý večer, milí priateľa. Máme tu vzácného hostia, je to Emerick Chopard, jeden z lídrov, kandidátky strany Národný front vo Francúzsku, geopolitik, spisovateľ, môj kolega, autor mnohých knih a je aj, dovolím si povedať, aj môj dobrý priateľ, ktorý prijal možnosť, prijal naše pozvanie a máme svojím spôsobom unikátnu možnosť rovno zo zdroja sa dozvedieť, čo sa vlastne deje vo Francúzsku, lebo takéto zdroje na Slovensku neexistujú. Jednoducho musím povedať, že tým, že ja nečítam po francúzsky, tak ani ja nemám nejaký taký veľký dosah na situáciu v tejto krajine. Takže témou našej besedy je situácia vo Francúzsku pred voľbami do voľieb do Európskeho parlamentu a a budúcnosť Francúzska v Európskej únie. Chcem zdôrazniť, že Francúzsko je jeden z členov Európskej únie, bez ktorého táto únie existovať nemôže. Bez Slovenska môže, bez Chorvátska môže, si myslím, že bez Polska môže veľmi dobre, ale bez Francúzska tento projekt je mŕtvý rovnako, ako je mŕtvý bez Nemecka, bez Anglicka. Je to taký pokus, si myslím, že bude celkom úspešný, lebo som nenašiel len možnosť urobiť účinný a rýchly preklad, ako robiť to samostatne a budem sa snažiť ten formát prispôsobiť dynamicky, takže Amrik hovorí po anglicky, takže ja budem nasledovne prekladať, je to moje pôvodné povolanie z mladosti, takže ja dám to nejako zvládne. Teraz by som chcel pomôžiť tú prvú otázku našmu hostevi, on je prvýkrát v Bratislave, takže Aký dojem máte aj na Slovensku, z Bratislavy a zo Slovenska? Amri, you are the first time in Bratislava and Slovakia. So what is your, your uh, impression on this country, your fresh impression? My first, first of all, thank you very much for your invitation. Predovšetkým ďakujem veľmi pekne za pozvanie. It's a pleasure to be here with you and to discuss about politics. Je to byť s vami a hovoriť o politike. My first impression is that we are in a very European country in terms of civilization. My prvý dojem je, že sme vo veľmi európskej krajine z radiskej civilizácie. Je to pravda, práve sme chodili po Bratislave a Embry konštatoval, že to je Európa. And Bratislava center is very beautiful. Centr Bratislavy je veľmi pekný. I took time to visit a little bit the old center with my friend Sergei. Um, maybe uh, you know that I live in Austria, not far from here, in Vienna. Because uh, my wife and my children would like Europe as a civilization, even if we don't like Brussels as a power. Because my children have a lot of Europe as a civilization, but not Brussels as a center of power. What we are defending is another Europe, another common house. What we are defending is another Europe, another community home for us all. I will tell you something that something that Slovaks will appreciate very much. Poviem, čo Slovakom sa, a ja som bol zaskočený. Amrit má štyri deti. You've got four children. Je veľmi šťastný, že je to tak. Now, 
Začneme hovoriť o tom, čo je Európa ako taká. Ten pohľad zo Francúzska je veľmi, veľmi iný. Proste on je absolútne odlišný ako pohľad zo Slovenska. This view from France is absolutely different from that of Slovakia. So, preto položím veľmi jednoduchú otázku. That before, that's why, so I will ask a very, very simple question. Ako dlho vydrží Európska Unia? How long European Union will last? It's a very good question. I think we are now at the end of a process. We are in a huge crisis. Je to dobrá otázka. My sme na konci procesu, sme vo veľkej kríze. Because there was a misunderstanding in this European construction process since the beginning. Pretože od začiatku budovania Európskeho zjednotenia bolo veľké nepochopenie. The political elite in France or in Germany or in different countries said since the beginning that thanks to this European construction the European people will live in a better world, will be richer, will be more powerful. Politická elita hovorila, že vďaka budovania Európskej unie my budeme žiť v lepšom svete, budeme bohatšie, budeme sa mať lepšie, budeme silnejšie, čo je dôležité. But the problem is that it's not Europe as a power, it's Europe inside the ends of a small oligarchy, which is not the interest of the people. Ale problém je v tom, že je to nie Európa ako veľká moc, je to moc malej skupiny oligarchov, ktorí jednoducho ignorujú záujme ľudí. And for example, the European Commission is just working for bankers' interest, for oligarchs, not really for the common, for the good of people, in fact. Že Európska komisia funguje pre bankárov, pre oligarchov, ale nie pre dobrých ľudí, to je pekné. Pre dobrých ľudí nefunguje. So what we want to build is another Europe that respect the diversity of nation, that respect the identity of each European nation, and that respect the level of economy of each nation. Takže to, čo my chceme, je iná Európa, ktorá rešpektuje diverzitu, rozdiely medzi národmi, rešpektuje, sorry, Europe that will respect the diversity of nation, the identity, the economical identity, and respect for each other. The most important thing is the economic divide. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm old. 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 And we we are not against Europe as a as a dream as a civilization, of course. As I told you, when I in Bratislava, I feel in Europe like in Paris or like in Berlin or like in Madrid. But we are promoting. We try to promote another project of Europe. My nie sme proti Európe ako civilizácii a Amerik hovorí, že on cíti, opakuje, že cíti sa byť v Európe, v Bratislave, aj proste v Madride, ale jeho strana a jeho hnutie sa uchádza o budovanie nového projektu Európy. What will be this new project? Can you describe it? Because it's an absolute news for Slovakia, for Czech Republic, there's something else except uh, the European Union as it is might exist. Mohli byste popisať, v čom je podstata toho nového projektu, lebo na Slovensku, no jednoducho aj v Čechách, nikto nevie, že niečo také nové môže existovať, môže existovať niečo okrem toho, čo reálne existuje. First of all, each nation has its own identity. Predovšetkým každý národ má vlastnú identitu. And that's the first and the priority of our project is to stay European people, not to be replaced by 
non-European population from Africa, for example. Ten základ projektu je, aby Evropané zůstali Evropanmi a neboli vyměněni za představitelů jiných civilizací, například azijských nebo afrických. But instead of promoting the necessity for European citizens to maybe to have more babies, the European Union say you should replace your low birth rate by immigrants. A na místo toho, aby podporili porodnost v evropských krajinách, Evropská unie hovoří o tom, že vy jedno ducho musíte vyměnit ty starší vrstvy obyvatelstva za emigrantů. And for example, in France, if we don't stop the immigration process within 20 or 30 years, we could have a majority of Muslim people in France. In France, if the process of immigration is not stopped for 20 or 30 years, Muslims will be in the majority of this country. Personally, I have good relations with the Arabic country. I taught many years in Morocco. I have good friends in several French-speaking Arabic countries, but I definitely do not want my country to become an Arabic or an African country. Osobně mám velmi dobré vztahy s Arabmi, a jsem učil velo roku v Maroku v jiných krajinách. No, já nechci, aby moje krajina se přeměnila na arabskou krajinu. So it's not a question to be a racist or to be pro-xenophobia. We are not. We are just saying we just want to preserve our identity. We have nothing against other people. We do not want arm to be people, but we want to preserve our identity, which is, I would say, a natural and historical right for each population. Že to není otázka rasismu, to je snaha zachránit vlastní identitu, čili identitu, čili historické právo každého národa. Slovakia. Is still a complete European country in terms of population. So maybe you are not, or maybe the population is not conscious of its danger. Slovensko stále je úplně evropská krajina z hlediska obyvatelstva, takže pravděpodobně Slováci si neuvědomují rozsah tohoto problému. But in the Western countries, Spain, Belgium, France, UK. And other countries, the expansion of Muslim and African immigration is a huge problem, and it creates big tension inside the population. Ale v krajinách západní Evropy expanse těch nových Evropanů, nejméně z Afriky a Asie, je obrovský problém, který jedno dokud tlačí na toto obyvatelstvo. Já teraz pomůžu Amerikovi. Přece jen ještě raz to otázku, nebo jen mě velmi zajímá, ako dlouho vydrží Evropská unie v tomto složení, v jakém je. I will just ask you the question that I am personally also interested in your in your prediction. How long the European Union as it is can exist? How long will it last? It's difficult to to predict exactly. The date, the date of the European Union collapse. It is difficult to predict the precise date when the European Union falls. But as I told you, we are assisting to a European population revolt against this process. No, as I said, we are helping the revolution of the European population against this process. For example, in France. My party, the National Front, is expected to be the first party at the next European election. We could be the first at the first rank at this election. No, for example, the National Front in France is expected to be the first to win the European Parliament. I will add that this is the general expectation that we will be the first to win the European Parliament. And uh, how many percent do you expect? Koliko percento predpokladate? We expect to be uh, something like 25%. And predpokladame, že získame okolo 25%. And the conservative uh, center-right could be 21-22. Centriska strana konservatorov može biti 21-22%. And the Socialist Party, which is the, the ruling party now, 
in France could be only, just only 15%. Socialistické strany, strany, které vládnou stranou ve Francouzsku, může mít jen 15%. So we expect a kind of earthquake in terms of politics in France, and that will be a very strong signal sent to uh, uh, the European Union and to the other states. My očekáváme něco jako zemětřesení v rámci těchto voleb, které bude velmi silným signálem pro Evropskou unii a pro jiné evropské krajiny. And what we want to do is a big, a huge alliance. We, we need allies all around Europe with pro-sovereignty, pro-identity, anti-EU processed party. That's what we expect to do with many countries like yours, like other countries in the Eastern countries of Europe. And what we want to do is a big alliance. How can you describe uh, the, what will happen after the election? We, we, we are in the field of predictions, so what will happen if it will be so as you've been saying now? I ask you to describe what will happen after the election, if it will be so as you've been saying now. What we can predict probably is the same phenomenon in many European Union countries. Which means that if we can constitute a very strong alliance of sovereignist parties, we, we can have a very strong group at the European Parliament my můžeme vytvořit velmi silnou skupinu v Evropském parlamentu. And then we will play a strong role inside the specialized commission. A budeme hrát velmi silnou úlohu v specializované komisi. And the change of European project will begin. A ten ta změna evropského projektu může se se začne. And there are many things to change, not only the problem of identity, economy of course is very important and we want to change also uh, this project in terms of economy because we think globalization is a very big danger for European people. To nie nie ide iba o emigráciu, ide o to, že globalizáciu my chceme zmeniť aj ekonomickú podstatu Európskej únie a vnímame globalizmus ako ako najväčšie, najväčšiu hrozbu pre Európsku úniu. In September I met Jean-Marie in Paris and we had some interview where he said that uh, European Union is, is a jail of globalism. What actually by the word globalism Jean-Marie Rubin meant? Uh, som urobil rozhovor s Žanom Marie Lipenom, kde on povedal, že Európska únie je basa globalizmu. Čo vlastne samotným slovom globalizm menil Žan Marie Lipen? Zdôrazním, že Žan Marie Lipen je stále v podstate hrdina neslovenského, francúzského národa, uznaný a v podstate stále má nezastupiteľnú ideologickú úlohu. Globalization means uh, that a, a new oligarchy, a new world oligarchy has started to uh, decide of the future of all the population in the world. And that means that state government are just the executive. Uh, they are obeying to this oligarchy, which is a capitalistic oligarchy, a world oligarchy, working not for the nation's interest, but working only for, for their own interest. To znamená, že vlády sú v podstate iba ich exekutívami, exekutívami svetovej oligarchy, ktorá 
не, не фунгуе при заоме народу, фунгуе при своје властни заоме. It's a big question, uh, who are they, this, this horrible people, uh, this world oligarchy? Je to ťažká otázka, kto vlastne sú to ľudia, títo hrozné ľudia, táto svetová oligarchia? No, it's, it's, it's not a question to be horrible or something like that. To nie je také hrozné. It's a fair world organized people. To sú ľudia, ktorí sú svetové organizované. Can we say that new world order has to do something with with, with this with this uh, with this elite? Yes. Can we say that new world order has to do something with with this elite? Yes. They belong to old um, financial oligarchy. They have their own interests, and some of them have a kind of world globalized dream. Mm-hmm. Oni patria tej starej finančnej oligarchie a niektorí z nich majú taký nový, nový globalizovaný sen. And what they want, they don't want a multipolar world. Oni nechcú multipolárny svet. With Europe as a power, with Russia, with the US, with China. S Európou, s Ruskom, s Čínou ako centrami moci. What they want is a unipolar world centered on the United States. Oni chcem unipolárny svet s centrom Spojených štátov. With the hegemony of dollar. With dollar hegemony. With the hegemony of dollar. And they want to keep this US hegemony all around, all over Europe. A oni chcú zachrániť túto hegemoniu uh, amerického dolara po celé Európe. That's why they are competing so hard with Russia as a player. And the problem of these people, uh, this, uh, I would say, Anglo-Saxon oligarchy, because most of them are Anglo-Saxon people, this problem is that they are not working for the interest of our population. A probléma tejto anglosávské oligarchie, lebo väčšina z nich sú anglosávské, je v tom, že oni ne, ne fungujú pre záujmy e, národov. They don't want strong political power guided by national interest. They want weak governmental power that they can uh, lead. Oni nepotrebujú silnú, silnú vládu, ktorá je e, orientovaná na národné záujmy, potrebujú slabé, slabé vlády. Uh, Amri, I know that you took part in the referendum in Crimea. Uh, you were the only representative of your party who came there. Could, I also wanted to come, but I couldn't. So, uh, could you describe your impressions in some words? Pýtam sa Amrika na jeho účasť v referende v Kríme, kde on bol jeden, iba jeden predstaviteľ e, Národného fronta, ktorý sa toho zúčastnil a on mi iba dva, dva slova hovoril o tom, akože, takže chcem sa opýtať na jeho zážitky a si myslím, že to bude zaujímavé. Yes, it was a very interesting experience. Bolo to veľmi zaujímavá skúsenosť. As over European people coming from different countries, from Italy, from France, I was one of the representatives from Austria, from Belgium, um, and over nationalities. I was an observer for this referendum. Люди приходили з різних западноєвропських країн, а Америк був позорнатим на тих, хто на тому референді. And I wanted to be there because I do not believe definitely in uh, the mainstream French mass media. Because in most of the Western countries' mass media, US propaganda is very strong. So, <laughs> so I wanted to see by myself, to have my own view and to understand by myself the, the real situation in Crimea. So I wanted to see by myself, to have my own view and to understand by myself the real situation in Crimea. 
what I saw was very clear. I went to Simferopol, I went to Sebastopol, to many places. We are talking about the Russian population. And historically speaking, and politically speaking, it, the, the result of the referendum was natural. I historically and politically think the referendum is absolutely natural. There were Russian, there are Russian people wanted, then they want to go back to home. To so they had the right to decide of their destiny, it was right to decide of their destiny, it was clear. But unfortunately, the US media, the US and Western media, decided that they have no right to do it. No, na, na nešťastie západné médiá, hlavne americké médiá, americké politici povedali, že oni nemajú právo toto urobiť. Which, we, which is totally unfair, because in the past, uh, in 1999, you remember, uh, they supported Kosovo as a new state, and they broke the international law to do that. Čo je, čo je absolútne nespravodlivé, ako už si pamätáte, v roku 1999 podporili vznik Kosova ako nového štátu, čo bolo absolútnym porušením medzinárodného práva. So in the Western world, which is very strange, we are talking about these Western countries that made so many wars since 1919 with foreign armies in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in over Uh, place of the planet. Že na jednej strane zo západného sveta vidíme toľko vojen, čo sa dohrali od roku 90 uh, na Blízkom východe Irán, Afganistán a v ďalších kútoch po našej, našej planety. And they did it outside the international law. Uh, to, to bolo úplne uh, vne rámce medzinárodného práva. And, and now they would like to give some moral lessons of human rights or democracy to Russia, which is quite incredible. Did they, the people you saw there were, were really, uh, were really uh, happy? Uh, no, were, were they really happy? Were they, um, was it a, a holiday for them? Was it What was the atmosphere? Či títo ľudia boli šťastní, či to bol pre nich sviatok, aká bola atmosféra to? Yes, people were very happy and there was some fireworks everywhere. The main place of Simferopol, you can have so many young people on the Sunday evening. Everybody was happy, I was talking in a direct uh, TV show to Russia today, and when I was talking, everybody was shouting, so many people, so, I mean, it was not organized, it was a spontaneous uh, happiness. And even a uh, French journalist that, that were sitting in the place, they admitted that when coming back home, they said, okay, we have to say that we have seen that these people, most of them are Russian, and they just uh, choose to go home. That was natural. There is nothing to say. Dokonca and they changed their mind a little bit. Francuské novinári do veľkej miery uznali, že jednoducho to sú Rusi, ktorí chcú sa vrátiť k sebe domov, že majú na to právo. Okay. Uh, let's say something about the uh, future of peace in Europe. You are a geopolitician to a certain extent, I'm also uh, a geopolitical expert. So what are the main threats to, to peace in Europe in your mind? Chcem poprosiť komentovať, trošku hovoriť o miery v Európe. Ameriky je môj kolega, sa zaoberá geopolitikou. Takže aké sú najväčšie hrozby pre mňa v Európe v tejto chvíli? There are several threats for Europe. Existujú niekoľko hrozby pre Európe. I will say the 
the most important, the most serious source of concern for me is this unipolar project. The najvećim zdrojem nepokoje v mojem hapanju je ton jednopolovi projekt jednopolarnemu jednopolovom sveta. All these pro-US elite that rule the Western countries, the Western government is uh, agrees to uh, make a kind of transatlantic blockade. Že celá ta elita, která kooperuje s americkou vládou, v podstatě souhlasí s tím, že by urobili něco jako transatlantická blokáda. They accepted the idea after the collapse of USSR to expand NATO to the uh, Russian borders. Oni přijali myšlenku po kolapsu Sovětského svazu rozšířit NATO do na ruské hranice. I'm sorry, I'll comment just a little in Slovak. You know this, what I'll say. Ja chcem zdôrazniť, priateľe, že v ruských, v európskych médiách je absolútne známe, že podstatou dohody medzi Gorbačovým a americkými prezidentami, hej, konkrétne Bushom, bol, že Rusko pustí priestor v východnej Európy. Že obrovská ruská armáda, ktorá v Nemecku bola, neviem, a bolo 350 tisíc, ďalšie cifry si nepamätám, obrovská armáda sa stiahne, dá prázdne miesto do Ruska, ale títo krajiny nevstúpia do NATO. Toto bola dohoda, ktorá bola okamžite porušená. Rusko svoju časť splnila a opustila bez bojov zemi, ktoré nevalne dávno Ruska armáda obsadila akože víťazstvom nad konkrétne v Nemecku, nad fašistickým Nemeckom. Táto dohoda z inej strany nebola splnená. Just to explain that it was really a deal between Bush and Gorbachev that NATO has, has, not, has no right to, to spread, to expand towards, towards the former, former Warsaw Treaty countries. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And unfortunately, the, the American broke the agreement and they decided to expand NATO. And that, that's a, a big problem because it creates a tension and uh, the risk for the future could be that Russia will work, will play with China against uh, a, a united Western world. And that will create, that would create the condition for war. Mm -hmm. So what I will think... Mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, the problem is that NATO has this agreement and that's why the motivation for Russia is to be with China a jednoducho sa pripravovať, že toto vzniklo obrovské napätie, lebo Rusko cíti sa byť ohrozené a v podstate to môže smerovať tomu, že Rusko sa spojí s Čínou a toto vyvolá vojnu. A násky kvášim, možno je to nie zlé, ak Rusko a Čína vzniklo vzniklo militárny blok, možno je to vzniklo 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 vzniklo. Chcem položiť otázku, možno to nie je tak zlé, ak Čína a Rusko vytvorí vojenský zblok, možno to bude práve to, čo sa stane svetovou vojnou. I think, if it's what the US wants, they want a new bipolarity between a united western world with Europe and US against China and Russia. That's what they want. And I think our interest Of course, I understand Russia. If, if Russia is playing with China, it, it's a consequences of the U.S. strategy. They try to defend themselves against the expansion of NATO by playing a kind of alliance with China. But I think our interest is an independent Europe, independent from the U.S. and good cooperation with Russia. Mm -hmm. This is our interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you že samozrejme Spojené štáty chcú vytvoriť proste ten unipolárny svet s dominanciou Európy, Spojených štátov proti Rusko a Číne, že je to legitimné, že Rusko bude chrániť svoje záujmy a bude sa snažiť vytvoriť blok s Čínou, ale z hľadiska Ameriky, z hľadiska Európy je dôležité, aby Európa bola samostatnou sílou, ktorá by mala dobrý vzťah aj s Ruskom a s Čínou. And the reason why we are fighting against the European Union construction 
precisely one of the main reasons, not the only one, but one of the main reasons is the fact that the European Union now is not making Europe as an independent power. A jedna z príčin, prečo my zápasíme s touto tým realitou Európskej únie, je preto, že Európska únie netvorí z Európy nezávislú silu. They are making Europe as a part of a transatlantic blockade. A nerobia z Európy nejakú časť transatlantickým blokami. Amri, is Europe a colony, a colony of the United States? A simple question. Či je Európa kolóniou Spojených štátov? Tak veľa hovoria v Rusku, je to jednoduchá otázka. Sorry, the question is... Is Europe a colony of United States? Yes, in a certain way. Western Europe for sure, and some Eastern countries also. No, v istom smysle áno, západná Európa určite, a niektoré východné európske krajiny tiež. OK, another question. Which Eastern European countries are not colonies of United States? Maybe it's more difficult. Maybe Slovakia, not yet. Most of them, unfortunately. But France, you know, France, we had in the past, we we had General de Gaulle, we had an independent policy, foreign policy. But unfortunately, since Sarkozy power. We are. We we have most of people from the foreign ministry are pro U.S. and it's 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 a big it's a big mistake, I think, in terms of French interest. Jo, vo Francúzsku my sme mali golistu tradíciu, najviac tá strana sa hlási golizmu ako filozofické, politické doktríne francúzska. A mali sme za de Gaulle takú nezávislú politiku. Teraz sme viac menej područí. OK. What do you think? How long is this change of European Union can have an early parliamentary reform? Can it be in the legal terms? Can it be peaceful? Is it possible in general? Pýtam sa, či táto zmena Európskej únie môže mať iba mierový príbeh v rámci zákona, či je to niečo také vôbec možné? I think we have no, there is no idealistic solution. The only possibility is to be strong inside the European Parliament. No. U nás nie sú idealistické riešenie. Jediné riešenie je byť silnými vo vnútri Európskej únie. And that will be the only solution to force the legal governance of all these countries to change their policy. A to je jediná možnosť priklačiť vlády tých ďalších strán, aby oni menili svoju politiku. If we have our sovereignty, then we will decide another foreign policy. Jestli my budeme suverénni, my rozhodneme o iných krajinách. Sorry, but... I believe and I wish you success, but if France is a success, uh, maybe France will be alone. Who else will support France in this change? Yeah, prime Francusko uspech už tejto zmene, hej, ale ak Francusko zostane samo, kto, kto ešte môže podporiť Francusko v takýchto zmenách? We think that France, of course, European, France is not European Union, and un, un, European Union is different from France, but France is, is still an important player, and if we decide with a sovereign, pro-sovereignty government, if we decide to uh, exit from this process of mm -hmm. European Union, then the consequences will be huge. It will destroy immediately European Union as it exists. No, ale je to veľmi vplyvný člen. Ak my sa rozhodneme pre suverénnu politiku, to okamžite zmeni a zničí Európsku úniu v tejto podobe, v ktorej existuje. So, as soon as we will arrive at power, and it will be possible according to the service, the poll service, it is possible that in 2017 Marine Le Pen could win the presidential election. Ako náhle my sa dostaneme k moci a na základe sociologických výskumov je dosť pravdepodobné, že v roku 2017 Marine Le Pen vyhra prezidentské voľby 
Pripomeniem, že Francúzsko je prezidentské krajina, ktoré je inak uspojedané ako, ako väčšina európskych krajín, kde vláda prezidenta je rozhodujúca. And if it's happen, then we will ask to our European partner, the German, the English, all the government, there are two solutions. First solution, you accept to change the European Union model, more realistic, more respectful of sovereignties. So there are two decisions. First, we will go to our partners with the fact that we want to change the European Union to something new, where there is more sovereignty, where there is more justice. And there, or if you don't, do not accept that, then we will decide to exit from European Union. Ale bo my to nie przyjmiemy, tak my my rozhodniemy się o tym, że my wyjdziemy z Europejskiej Unii. And we are sure that if we say that something very important will happen, and that will be a new start for Europe, but different way. My si myslíme, že ak my to povieme, niečo veľmi dôležité sa uskutočne a bude to nový, nový krok pre Európu, bude to reálna zmena.